I often get asked where I find my assets and how you can find good assets for yourself. Assets can make or break your design, so it's very important to find some good ones. Now, there's a couple things to think about when starting to look for assets. That's something I wanna cover in this video, as well as sharing my favorite places to find assets. First thing being quality. You wanna make sure that you're looking for high quality assets. Yes, sometimes an asset can be too high quality, but it really can never hurt you to have those extra pixels to work with. This is especially true in animations where you want to zoom in, scale up things. Once you start seeing those little pixels, everything just starts looking cheap. So make sure that you use high quality assets in everything that you do. The second thing is style. You wanna make sure that the assets you're finding fit the style of whatever you're trying to make. Mixing and matching different styles in some cases can be cool, but in most cases, it's gonna look cheap and low effort. If you're making a 60 frames per second gaming intro, you don't wanna use assets that look more old school, like old style illustrations. So just make sure that whatever you do is cohesive. Now that we have some pointers to follow, we can start looking at some sites that I use all the time to find the assets that I use in my videos and projects. The first source on the list is the Library of Congress. I find myself using the Chronicling of America, which is a, a set of historic newspapers from 1770 to 1963 that have all been scanned in super high quality. I use this a lot to find assets. I use this in the collage animation, for example, most recently, where I found pretty much everything that I used in there. All the scans are super high quality and it's so easy to search for different things. Most of the scans that I've gotten from there have been in around four by 6,000 resolution, which is super nice and gives you some breathing room, especially when you want to zoom in. More so you can download them as PDS, which is just gonna make it even easier to use in After Effects because it keeps a lot of that scaling. Outside of that newspaper section, they also have a lot of different categories categories with old scans. One I recently came across was a bunch of scans of old baseball cards, which looks super cool. I haven't found a use for them yet, but they look pretty cool and I'm sure you could find a use for them. Secondly, we have the Internet Archive of Books, I think it's called, on Flickr. Now this is a collection of various scans, illustrations, photos. The website is a bit iffy. Sometimes the search functionality works really well, sometimes it doesn't work at all, and then you're just stuck manually going through each and every page, and there are thousands. This can be a deal breaker. If if you're trying to do something fast, but I do enjoy scrolling through and just kind of looking and seeing what there is. Most of the scans aren't super high quality, but they are super cool. Worst case scenario, you can use AI upscaling to increase the quality of them. Up next is the OSH map library, I think you pronounce it. It's basically a collection of old school type of maps. Their search functionality works very well and you can search for specific regions, countries, etc., and quickly find stuff. I, for example, looked for a map of Denmark, which is where I'm from, and they have a whole bunch of different scans of Danish maps throughout history. What's even cooler is that you can also go in and see the atlases because usually they scan complete books so you can see different pages of the books as well. The download quality isn't always the highest. It, it's decent. The built-in preview of the pages seems to be higher than what you can download. The fourth place to find assets is a little bit different than the other ones because they have been very focused on traditional sources, images and stuff. Whereas this one from Lovely and Spotless Graphics is mockups. They have a lot of paid mockups that you can use which are all very high quality, but they also have a very good free selection of mockups. This is nice if you're doing some branding work and you wanna showcase whatever you've made in a nice clean manner. Another thing I love to do with the branding stuff is taking it into After Effects and then just animating just a little bit. You know, it can bring something to life so much more if you just add a tiny bit of movement and it just helps with presentation. Presentation is everything when we do branding work. Now I do have a couple of quick honorable mentions that you should know before we get to the absolute final source site thing on my list. The honorable mentions are texturelabs.org. Um, you should know about this. They have textures, very high quality. Love it, use it literally all the time. We have texture fabric, which is also uh, textures, they have less than texture labs, but also very good, very nice. They also have some vector stuff, which is nice to play around with some different shapes and patterns. Next up is Pinterest, which you also should know, good for inspiration, but also just finding random stuff. And the last honorable mention is Behance. I think you pronounced it, I'm not too sure, but they have a lot of cool mock-ups and also fonts. I've gotten a lot of fonts from there. So, you know, look around, see what you can find and, you know, just have a good old time finding cool stuff. Last but not least, the final source that I would recommend is Google Images. It seems like a very obvious answer and a very cheap way out of this video but I do use it all the time and I do think there's a couple tips that I can give you to find some better assets. You can be specific in your searches which is going to help narrow it down a lot but you can also add a couple more filters to make your search a little easier. One thing I always do regardless of anything is searching by size and I always go largest. I never go medium, I never go small, I always go largest. Anything lower than that is not gonna be worth your time. Additionally, if I need a transparent image, uh, you can sort by that as well. So you actually get transparent and not just fake PNGs, which we probably all 
know how painful that can be. Lastly, you can also search by rights. It's not something I've done a bunch, but I probably should. You know, we don't want to steal, but you know, sometimes you just gotta, you know what I'm saying? But I do use it all the time, and I do think if you know how to use it properly, it can be a super powerful tool. And with that being said, my list has been concluded. Make sure you use good assets for the love of God, for the love of me, for the love of yourself, and for the love of the craft. And uh, I'll see you again next week. So um, thank you and uh, peace.